That quick video illustrated how Barack Obama became the president. He rose from a senator, a, a small, unknown senator in, in Chicago, uh, representing Illinois, all the way to the president of the United States. Now, many people have been in Barack Obama's shoes before. They start off as nobodies, and then they rise within their political party. So first off, if you want to eventually become the president, you're going to have to go through this process. You're going to have to be nominated. All elected officials must be nominated and endorsed by their political party in order to become the president. No, most of these people are either governors and House representatives, senators, even at one time a mayor. After you get the nomination to try to represent your political party, you must get on the road and raise money. Remember, third parties are lowly parties because they don't have enough money. They can't advertise as much. They can't spread the word as much. But when you're trying to become the president of the United States, you have to raise money. You have to get out there and advertise. You have to get support. You have to get people within your party to recognize that you are the person that they need to represent them in the presidential election and that you could win and beat out the other major political party. Now, financing campaigns becomes very important. A successful presidential campaign has to have a huge staff. They have to have consultants, and you have to have people around the clock working. So you have to have a lot of resources. You have to have the funds. Most of the funds that come from financing these campaigns, they come from individual citizens like you and I. And most importantly, they come from corporations, business, businesses, interest groups, and political action committees. If you look at this chart or this diagram, in this previous election, Barack Obama raised well over $900 million. So did Mitt Romney. That's a lot of money. But you have to think about where they're getting all this money from. They're getting it from us, they're getting it from businesses, and they're getting it from anybody who's willing to donate money to them. If you look at this right here, this is, these are the top Obama donors for the 2012 election. You have the University of California at the top. You have... Uh, financial groups like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, you can have Microsoft donating close to a million dollars. So these are big time corporations that are donating money. Now most of these companies are donating money because they have their own interest at heart. Interest groups and political action committees are two organizations which donate money to campaigns. Now what they're doing is in an interest group and a political action committee, you're essentially a group of people who think alike on a specific subject. And you want to make sure that that topic is a priority within the government. So something like the environment or even uh, technology. If you're a technology guy, you want to make sure that you have open access to all the new technologies and no government restrictions. You're going to donate the money to the president so he'll look out for you in the, in the end. And hopefully he won't pass any new laws or legislature which would uh, cause you not to be able to do what you want to do. So interest groups and political action committees are two organizations which donate money to presidential campaigns. And they're big time donators. Now, we just talked about the nomination phase of how you become from a, just an ordinary person within your political party to rise up to become a, a potential presidential candidate. After you gain some popularity and your political party recognizes that you could potentially be a president, they select five to seven people who are in your same situation, and then you have a runoff to see who would be the best fit for the political party. So after that, you have a primary. You're nominated, and then you go to a primary. In a primary, you're going to have either an open or closed primary. Members of your political party are going to decide and vote on who they want to represent in the presidential election. So citizens from around the country in different states, they go to their polls and they vote for which candidate they feel will be the best fit for their political party. So if you're a Democrat in 2008 when it was an open seat, everybody went to the polls to make sure Barack Obama was a person that was representing the Democratic Party. And he ended up winning and that's how he became the president. He won out his Democratic primary. After the primary happens, the person who has plurality, which means the greatest number of votes, they are declared the winner. And at the national convention, they are introduced to their uh, political party, and the delegates are chosen. And after the delegates are chosen and the nominee is introduced, together they work to create a platform for that political party. And then it's on to the actual campaigning for the general election, which will name the winner of the presidential election. That's it. I hope you learned something.